Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We are picking up with day two of our Tactics for Spiritual Warfare devotional on the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, and I'm also going to pick up the Devo. And if you missed yesterday's episode, and I'll say this again tomorrow too, but if you missed yesterday's episode, this really shares the heart behind why we're choosing to work through this spiritual warfare uh, devotional series. It's only three days, but yeah, there's just a heartfelt message in there. So if you missed that, go back and listen to it. So the scripture is Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, and it says this, Therefore, God elevated him to the highest place of honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth, every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The devotional is titled, Speak the Name of Jesus, and it says this. When we meet with spiritual warfare, we may be tempted to wrestle the enemy in the flesh. But since we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we won't find any victory in battle by taking on enemies with our intellect, our reasoning, or our sheer willpower. Paul told us the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God. 2 Corinthians 10.4 The mighty weapons with which God has furnished us work with one condition. We must wield the spiritual artillery under the lordship of Jesus Christ and with the authority he has given us in his name. Our baseline in any battle is understanding the power in the name of Jesus, praying in the name of Jesus, and otherwise taking authority over our enemies in the name Jesus. In our own authority, we have no ability to stand against the devil. We cannot go toe-to-toe with the devil in our flesh, nor can we effectively use Jesus' name in our demonic confrontations without a revelation of the power that his name carries. Just like there is no other name under heaven by which can be saved, there is no other name under heaven which we can take authority over demonic powers. Meditate on the power in the name of Jesus. Get a revelation of the power in the name before you enter into battle to exercise your authority in Christ, and you will see victory. And I heard, I think I heard a preacher say this once that um, this can be super spiritual without being super spooky. And I know that people fall in different areas of the spectrum of spiritual attacks and stuff like that. And so I'm not an expert on this. So I'm going to be sharing from my own personal experience, which I'm sure you all understand. We've been doing this for four years now or three and a half years. Um, But I've heard several people, and these are people that I love and I adore and I trust, several people, some that don't even know each other, that have had a dream where it felt like they were being demonically attacked, which for me, I've never experienced that, or at least that I know of. I actually don't really remember my dreams, to be perfectly honest. So sometimes I am worried out whenever people share this, this, and that. And I'm like, well, I've I've never experienced anything like that. But I since have become a lot more open because I don't want to put God in a box. And what was so interesting, I'm thinking of one specific person right now where he had mentioned that it felt like there was like a shadow in his room and he was almost like being suffocated where he couldn't, he couldn't talk. And he was like, he couldn't move. And he was like stuck there, almost like a, a a pressure and a weight was over him. And I'm not making this up. This is really like what he shared with me. And, and then he shared, he, he was just trying to utter the name of Jesus. And he did finally. And then it was like, he woke up and the pressure was gone, the fear was gone, every, and it just all disappeared in a snap of a finger. And I got gruesome, so you can't really see right now, but I remember hearing that and thinking to myself, that's kind of weird. But like, obviously I'm not gonna like, you know, I love this guy, I'm not gonna like argue with them. But I now have since heard that from several people, things of similar circumstances. Maybe you've experienced that, or maybe you've heard someone who's experienced that. And I loved that Man, this is this is powerful. I just love that his response to fighting the enemy was to call out for Jesus. And so many of us are calling out for a different form of help. My myself included. I tend to fall on my own intellect or my own ability, my own perseverance, my own willpower, my own reasoning, my own justifications. I fall on myself. 
And I just, I loved his heart to know that in a tense moment of fear, of confusion, of struggle, of strife, he cries out Jesus. And that's what this devotional is telling us. And that's what scripture tells us specifically, that there is no name above his name. And even when you think about all the people who bash Christianity and specifically Jesus, think about the power that his name carries. Like, think about that. That 2,000 plus years later, right, if you mention his name, you will get a reaction from somebody. Sometimes it's hate. Sometimes it's weirdness. Sometimes it's, it's like, wow, to God be the glory, right? But that name carries so much power. And, and I think that as we learn to put more respect on his name and more, um, more power on his name, more authority on his name, it's incredible what it can do but I feel like we're operating without it sometimes. And so I'm going to read one piece of scripture and it is John chapter one, verse one and two and, and three and four. <laughs> and then verse, I think 14. And it says this, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. Skip down to verse 14. So the word became flesh and made his home among us. He was full of an unfailing love and faithfulness and we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. And we think back to Genesis when God, when God spoke the earth into existence. And then we see here in John 1, in the beginning, the word was already, the word already existed. And the word was with God and the word was God. And we see the power of words. We see the power of the word. We see the power of God. We see the power of Jesus. And sometimes we scoff as if it's not that important or that, 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 much, that powerful. And I think that's where I feel um, just you know, a little convicted about is is not running to him first, not running to him as a child runs to their parents when they need help. So, anyways, I'm gonna pray this out. Oh Lord, thank you for who you are to us. Thank you for how you know us and you've known us. Thank you for how gentle you are with us. Thank you for how you protect us. Thank you for how you provide for us. Thank you for how you cover us. Thank you for how you correct us. And thank you for everything else that you are for us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll help us cling to you in every moment and especially moments where there is a spiritual oppression or a spiritual resistance or attack happening. I pray that you help us fight those battles with what will actually win those battles, which is you and your word, because you are the word. You're the good word. You're the good news, Lord. In your sons, let me pray. Amen. Wait, men, y'all, now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget to love you. We love you, and we talk to you tomorrow. Adios. Adios.